In this chapter, we are going to talk about something called vectors. Um, vectors are arrows that have both magnitude and direction. So as you can see here, there is this red arrow that is um, kind of like a line from geometry, but it actually has an arrow, which means it's pointing somewhere. And that's what's important to kind of separate it from a normal line. All right, so this line has two points, right? There's this starting point and this ending point, ending point as in where the arrow is pointing. So this starting point we call initial point. And then the ending point we call terminal point. In this case, the initial point is at the coordinate 1, 2, and the terminal point is at the point 4, 6. So in order to find the vector, um, we write vector in this form called component form. And to find a component form, what we do is we um, we take the initial, uh, sorry, the terminal point and we subtract the initial point. So in this case, we're going to take 4, 6, and minus 1, 2. So very easy, we take the x minus x, we get 3. And then y minus y, we get 4. And then what we want to do is we want to indicate that this is a vector and not a point. So we write it with these two arrow kind of bracket. And this is what we call the component form. So we would write 3, 4 as the component form. So a few things to remember. To find the component form, you take the terminal point. Uh, minus the initial. Now, what does this component form mean with 3, 4? Well, 3, 4 is also something that is, um, you know, kind of ends at 3, 4. So let me kind of demonstrate this with another color. So 3, 4 is this point here, right? Now, that point is obviously not a vector because a vector has to have some kind of magnitude with meaning length and direction. It's not even pointing anywhere. So this is not a vector yet. But this 3, 4 means that the, the vector is pointing from the origin to this point. So then that's another thing you have to remember about the component form. So when a vector is in the component form, the so um, we can say this part is the terminal kind of like a terminal point, and then the initial point is at the origin. Okay, so as you can see, there are two ways, I guess, um, you can see how a vector could be um, represented. You could have a vector that's kind of somewhere in space where it has an initial point and a terminal terminal point. You can then change that vector into a component form by taking the terminal point minus initial point, and you get the component form, which would be the terminal point if the initial point starts at a version. Okay, we'll we'll practice so then you can kind of see that a little better. Um, now, the important thing is that any vector that has the same component form is the same vector. Any vector that has the same component form is the same vector. So that means if I have another vector, let's say, hmm, different color, let's say uh, like this. If I were to take the terminal point minus the initial point, I will also get 3, 4. Therefore, it's the same vector. So what it's saying is that you can actually just take this vector 
and then move it around anywhere in space. And then it will actually, we would call it the same vector. So it's really different from, you know, in geometry, when we think about line, line is fixed in space. And as soon as you move it somewhere else, it's not the same line, but this is not the same idea. This is just as long as it has the same uh, magnitude and direction, it is the same line. Okay, so our same vector. So let's have you practice. Which of the following is R the same as vector 6, 4, right? This is in component form. So which of the following, if you change it to component form, you would get the same vector. Now, um, let's look at how vectors are written. The Usually vectors are written, if they're given two points, then you see the two points with an arrow on top. Now, how do you know which one is initial point and which one is terminal point? Well, it's pretty easy. It starts from R, goes to S. So R must be initial point and S must be uh, terminal point. All right, so using the same idea, go ahead and figure out which one or ones are the same vector. Now, if you look at, uh, if you have to, after you change it to component form, you'll see that two and three um, have the same component form as six, four. So they are the same vectors. All right, so first we're going to talk about how to find a magnitude of a vector. So magnitude, remember, means how long the vector is. So it's the length of the vector. So let's look at this first question. Find a vector of the vector, uh, find a magnitude of the vector PQ, where P is negative 3, 4. So negative 3, 4 is P, and Q is negative 5, 2. Negative 5, 2. Okay, so the vector is pointing this, this way. So the question basically is saying, how long is this line? Now, that's pretty easy because if you were to just draw a right triangle like so, you can just find the length of that diagonal using um, Pythagorean theorem. And you can see that the length of the two, uh, the two um, sides are pretty easily found by just counting the units. So we can see that, um, you know, if you use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then you can see that the length of, um, let's call the horizontal a, so that's two, two squared plus b, let's call it the y, the vertical direction, two squared is c squared. And so this is eight equals c squared. So c is equal to two root two. So that's the magnitude of this vector. Now, what if you don't want to draw a picture every single time? Well, there are a few things you can do um, depending on what you're given. So if you are given um, a vector in like so, you have the initial point and the terminal point, then you can basically use kind of an expanded um, Pythagorean theorem. What does expanded Pythagorean theorem mean? It really just means distance formula. So remember to find the distance between po two points, you use the distance formula. So for example, if you have the initial point and the terminal point and you're trying to figure out the magnitude, then uh, you can see here magnitude is uh, represented by these kind of absolute value looking things, but they actually just mean magnitude, not um, absolute value. Then use the distance formula. Now it kind of depends on whether you remember the distance formula. So you just take uh, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now, when can you use um, the Pythagorean theorem? Well, you can use the Pythagorean theorem when it's in the component form. So remember component form means you just start from the um, origin and then you point to the terminal point like so. And so if you do that, this vector is actually going to point towards negative two, negative two. In this case, you can just use the um, Pythagorean theorem. So you can kind of think of it as square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, now let's have you try it. So find a magnitude of vector rs. rs is given by the component form to negative three. All right, this one's pretty easy. The answer is square root 13. 
Now let's talk about what you can do to a vector. So first thing is called a scalar multiplication. If you don't remember what scalar means, scalar is means a number. We had used scalar before when we talked about uh, not vectors, uh, matrix. So what we can do is we can multiply a number or a scalar to a vector u. You see how u is bolded? When something is bolded, that means it's a vector. But um, you cannot bold your <laughs> your writing. Like if you're doing homework, you're you know, saying, OK, let's bold this. Well, that's now unrecognizable. So you don't want to write u with trying to bold it to tell people that's a vector. What you want to do is you draw an arrow on top to say that that's a vector. So that's how you're going to write vectors to distinguish a vector from just a normal u. OK, anyways, if you have a um, number that's multiplied to a vector, that's basically saying the number multiplied to the component form, then simply just take the scalar and multiply to each component. OK, pretty easy. Uh, next thing is the resultant or the sum of vectors. So basically, when you add up two vectors, what do you get? Um, that's also very easy. You take the component form of each vector, and then you just add the respective components. So for example, this one, you just take the x plus x and then y plus y. That's it. The math is not hard. It's just understanding what vector does. That's a little bit harder. All right, let's talk about how um, adding vectors actually look like in, in, in reality. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is um, say that if we have two vectors like this, u and let's say somewhere in space v, if you want to add the two vectors together, we have this first method called the tail to head. What is tail to head? So tail to head means you're going to first move one of the vectors tail. Tail is uh, this part. This is the head. Head is where you're pointing. So tail to head means the tail of the second one has to line up with the head of the first one. So this is the tail of the second one, line up with the head of the first one, and then you know, like so. And then what you're going to do is draw a line from the tail of the first one to the head of the second one, and then connect the dots and uh, draw arrow pointing towards the head. Now this is called u plus v. So this is actually where the sum of the two vectors will point. Okay, this method is called tail to head. There's another method called the parallelogram. So I'm going to just draw the same vectors again, u and v. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to think of it as these two lines are parts of a parallelogram. So remember, parallelogram means something like this. So these two lines are these two points, or two, two lengths. And what we're going to do is connect the other two lines to form a parallelogram. So I'm going to draw the parallel line here, draw the parallel line here. So then we're forming a parallelogram. Next, what we're going to do is draw the diagonal through this parallelogram that connects the two lines, like so. And then this is u plus v. Notice how these two are exactly the same vectors. I mean, the two methods generate the same sum vector, um, but it's just two different ways of looking at it. OK, let's go ahead and try one together. So let's say um, u is negative 1, 3. Negative 1, 3 is here. Make sure you draw the arrow, because if you don't know where it's pointing, you're going to draw the wrong vector. All right, second one, 4, 7. Ooh, out of the range. 
All right, we're going to add them first algebraically. Algebraically is very easy. X plus X, Y plus Y. So this is 3, 10. So the final vector is going to point towards 3, 10. Now let's do this two ways. First, let's do it by head to tail. So we're going to take the second vector, which is V, and then we're going to move it so it lines up with the head of U, which is here, and then we point this way. Now you might be saying, I don't know how to <laughs> exactly point it if I don't have something that actually moves it. So what I usually do is I think of it as this is the new origin. This is now 0, 0. Think of it, think of it as 0, 0. It's not actually 0, 0. And then when I move V, now I'm starting 4, 7, counting 4, 7 from this new origin. So I'm going 4 this way, 7 up this way, and then I draw my line. Then what I'm going to do to draw the resultant vector is I'm going to connect from the uh, tail to the head, like so. Oof, that looks terrible. Um, so this is u plus v. Okay, that's one way. The second way is you, if you connect the, the parallelogram, uh, we already draw three sides of the parallelogram. So the fourth side is here, and then you draw the diagonal to complete the parallelogram, and then you have this vector. Okay. Let's you, have you try 2u minus v. Now, 2u minus v is a little bit trickier because what you're going to do is first you need to double the length of u. And then minus v is a little bit confusing. So I think of it as plus minus v. What does plus minus v mean? It means take the v vector and turn it around to the 180 direction. So if it were pointing this way, it's going to point the exact opposite. That would be the negative vector. All right, give this one a try. Okay, so here is the resultant vector. So hopefully you drew something better than mine, but basically if you did it correctly, this algebraic way shows us that you should be pointing at negative six, negative one, which this is also pointing at negative six, negative one. So you know that you did it correctly.